Welcome to another Warhammer 40k 8th edition battle report. This will be battle report 16, 1850 points, Death Guard vs. Zinch, chapter approved Maelstrom of War mission, targets of opportunity, and we will roll for a random deployment map. Let's start by taking a quick look around the board, where the terrain is, and where the objectives have been placed. Starting back in this corner with this 2 foot by 2 foot section, we have objective marker 3 right here in the middle. Next in this 2 foot by 2 foot section, we have objective marker 4 right here in the middle. And then finally, this 2 foot by 2 foot section on this side of the board with objective marker 5 right here in the middle. Over on the other side of the board, starting in this corner, we have this 2 foot by 2 foot section with objective marker 2 right here in the middle. Then moving over to this 2 foot by 2 foot section, we have objective marker 1 here in the middle. And then finally in this corner, the last 2 foot by 2 foot section with objective marker 6 right here in the middle. Before we roll for anything else, we first need to roll for how many extra command points the Zinch army will have thanks to Cairo's Fate Weaver being their warlord. So rolling a d3, and the symbol is a 6, so that is an extra 3 command points. So the Zinch army will have 9 command points, and the Death Guard army will have 6 command points for the ensuing battle. And now we need to roll for which random map deployment the armies will be playing on today. And here's the roll. Getting a 4, which is Hammer and Anvil. And so now we will roll for where the two armies will deploy. On a 1, 2, or a 3, the Death Guard will deploy on the near side and Zinch will deploy on the far side. On a 4, 5, or 6, the Death Guard will deploy on the far side and the Zinch will deploy on the near side. And so here's the roll. Getting a 6, so Zinch will deploy on the near side, and the Death Guard will deploy on the far side. On a 1, 2, or 3, the Death Guard will begin deploying first. On a 4, 5, or 6, Zinch will begin deploying first. Getting a 2, so Death Guard will begin deploying first. We will be back after the deployment. Both armies have now finished deploying. The Death Guard began deploying first, and they also finished deploying first, so they will go first unless Zinch is able to seize the initiative. Let's take a quick look at where the armies deployed. Starting with the Death Guard, going from left to right, from Zinch's perspective, there's a squad of Nurgling Swarms in the back sitting on objective marker 3. Then we have the Plague Burst Crawler, one of the Demon Princes of Nurgle, the Chaos Land Raider, which does have the Plague Marine Squad, the Plague Surgeon, the Tallyman, and the Malignant Plague Caster embarked inside, the second Demon Prince of Nurgle with wings, the second squad of Nurgling Swarms, and they are sitting on objective marker 6, and then finally the Warlord Mortarian sitting in that crater. Now taking a look at the Zinch deployment, going from right to left, from Nurgle's perspective, we have the Silver Soul Grinder of Zinch, a squad of 10 pink horrors sitting on objective marker 5, the Lord of Change with Baleful Sword and the Impossible Robe, the Warlord Kairos Fate Weaver, Magnus the Red, the blue soul grinder of Zinch, the second 10-man pink horror squad sitting on objective marker 2, and then finally the third squad of 10 pink horrors. This squad has the icon and the instrument. So now Zinch will attempt to seize the initiative, and they are looking for a 6. And they get the 6, so let's go into Zinch turn 1. <laughs> Going into Zinch turn 1, a reminder that Zinch has 9 command points, and the Death Guard have 6 command points. Zinch started off by drawing 3 new tactical objective cards, and they drew Assassinate, score 1 victory point if at least 1 enemy character was destroyed during this turn, if 3 or more enemy characters were destroyed during this turn, score D3 victory points instead. Psychological Warfare, score 1 victory point if your opponent failed a morale test during this turn, if your opponent failed 3 or more morale tests, score D3 victory points instead. And Secure Objective 5, score 1 victory point if you control objective marker 5 at the end of your turn. End objective marker 5 is right here, surrounded and controlled by this squad of pink horrors. So going into the movement phase, this squad of pink horrors sitting on objective marker 2 will remain still. This squad of pink horrors sitting on objective marker 5 will also remain still. This squad of pink horrors is going to move up the board 6 inches, and they will also declare an advance. 
And so here's their dice roll, getting an advance roll of five inches, which thanks to their instrument, they get to add one two for a six inch advance, which means they will have 12 inches of total movement. And they will finish their movement right here. They are now within three inches of the center of objective marker one. The blue soul grinder is now going to move eight inches up the board, and he will finish his movement right here. And now the silver soul grinder is going to move eight inches up the board, and it will finish its movement right here. Magnus the red will now move 16 inches up the board. And so Magnus will finish his movement right here. Now Kairos Fate Weaver is going to move 12 inches up the board. And he will finish his movement right here. And now the Lord of Change with Baleful Sword will move up the map 12 inches. And he will finish his movement right here. Going into the Psychic Phase, for Zinch turn 1, Zinch is going to start by using the stratagem Locus of Conjuration for 2 command points, which will bring them from 9 down to 7. Use this stratagem at the start of your Psychic Phase, select a Zinch Demon character from your army until the end of that phase, you can reroll any failed Psychic tests made for friendly Zinch Demon units within 6 inches of that model. Naturally, Kairos Fate Weaver will be the target of that stratagem since he's in between the Lord of Change and Magnus the Red. And so going into the test taking part of the psychic phase, we will start with Kairos Fate Weaver, who is going to attempt to manifest Gaze of Fate, and he will also attempt to manifest Smite and Bolt of Change onto the Chaos Land Raider because it is the closest visible enemy unit. So starting with Gaze of Fate, which has a warp charge value of 6, and it goes off with a 9 thanks to his psychic test bonus. Mortarian is within 24 inches, so he will attempt to deny the witch, and he fails with an 8. So Zinch will have one free reroll this turn. Next, Kairos will attempt to manifest Bolt of Change, which does not need to be on the closest visible enemy unit, but he still wants to target the Land Raider with it. And Bolt of Change has a warp charge value of 8, and he gets it with a 12. And that is impossible for Mortarian or any of the other Death Guard units to deny because they do not have Psychic Test bonuses. And so it does D3 Mortal Wounds, and it will do 2 Mortal Wounds. And so the Chaos Land Raider will go from 16 starting wounds down to 14. And so then finally, Kairos Fate Weaver will attempt to manifest Smite, and he gets it with an 8. Mortarian will use his second Deny the Witch in order to attempt to deny it, and he fails by also rolling an 8. And so this will also do D3 Mortal Wounds, and it will do 3 Mortal Wounds. And so the Chaos Land Raider will drop from 14 wounds down to 11. Now the Pink Horror Squad that advanced will attempt to manifest Smite onto this Demon Prince because it is the closest visible enemy unit to the Pink Horrors. Only rolling one dice, so looking for a 5 or a 6, and fails with a 4. So now the Lord of Change with Baleful Sword will attempt to cast Boon of Change onto Magnus, and he will also attempt to manifest Smite onto the Chaos Land Raider since it is the closest visible enemy unit and within 18 inches. Starting with Boon of Change, which has a warp charge value of 7, and he gets it with a 7. Mortarian is not within 24 inches of the Lord of Change, so the Demon Prince of Nurgle, who was targeted by the Pink Horrors, will attempt to deny the Witch. Looking for an 8 or higher, and fails by getting a 7 as well. So Boon of Change will go off, and rolling on the D3 table, getting a 6, which is Iron Skin plus 1 Toughness. So Magnus will now have plus 1 Toughness until the start of the next Zinch Psychic Phase. And so now the Lord of Change will attempt to manifest Smite onto the Land Raider, needs at least a 5, and gets it with a 9. The Demon Prince in between the Plague Burst Crawler and the Land Raider will now attempt to deny the Witch, needing at least a 10, and fails with a 7. And it will do D3 Mortal Wounds, and it will do just one Mortal Wound. And so the Land Raider will go from 11 Wounds down to 10. Now Magnus the Red will attempt to manifest Warp Time on himself. Warp Time has a Warp Charge value of 6, and he gets it with a 14, so it cannot be denied, but he will suffer Perils of the Warp. So it will do D3 Mortal Wounds, and it will do 2. However, thanks to the Crown of the Crimson King that Magnus has, roll a D6 whenever Magnus suffers a Mortal Wound as a result of Peril of the Warp. On a 2-up, that wound is ignored. So 2 dice, passes 1, and fails 1. So Magnus will take 1 Mortal Wound. And so Magnus will drop from 18 starting wounds down to 17. 
but he did pass the psychic test and with a 14, so it is impossible for the Death Guard to attempt to deny the witch, and so therefore Magnus will now be able to move up to another 16 inches, as if it were the movement phase. And so Magnus moved right to here. He is just over an inch away from the Plague Burst Crawler, but he is within three inches of the Demon Prince of Nurgle, and so if he were to do a multi-charge, he would automatically make it in because a two-inch charge since he's not charging through a crater, would be enough to put him within an inch of the Demon Prince. So if Magnus wants, he has a guaranteed multi-charge on these two models. As long as he doesn't die in Overwatch, that is. So now, Magnus the Red will attempt to manifest Smite onto the Plague Burst Crawler. Looking for at least a five. And he does get it with a six, but thanks to his trait Primark of the Thousand Suns, he can roll, re-roll any dice rolls of one that are made as part of a psychic test. So hoping for something bigger, and makes it a nine. Mortarian is still within 24 inches, however, and so therefore he can attempt one more Deny the Witch, needing at least a 10, and fails with a seven. But Magnus's Smite does an automatic D6 mortal wounds to start, instead of D3, so it will do five mortal wounds onto the play burst crawler. So five, five up disgustingly resilient rolls and passes three of them, only failing two. And so the play burst crawler will drop from 12 starting wounds down to 10. Finally, Magnus will attempt to manifest Death Hex onto the Demon Prince. Death Hex is a warp charge value of eight and he gets it with a nine. And unfortunately, there are no more deny the witch tests that the Death Guard can take because they've already used all five that are out on the table. So that Demon Prince of Nurgle cannot take invulnerable saves until the start of the next Zinch Psychic phase. Going into the shooting phase, Zinch will start by having this squad of 10 Pink Horrors all fire into Mortarian because they are all within 18 inch range and they can all see. However, since they advanced firing assault weapons, they will only hit on fives instead of fours. So 20 shots, hitting on fives and getting eight hits, wounding on sixes and all failed wound. So now the blue soul grinder is gonna fire everything that it has into the chaos land raider that's down to 10 wounds. Starting with the Harvester Cannon, three shots hitting on fives, getting one hit, wounding on a five, and it wounds. One three up armor save, which fails, and it does D3 damage, and it will do two damage. And so the Land Raider will drop from 10 wounds down to eight. Now for the Flem Bombardment, D6 shots, getting five shots, hitting on fives, getting two hits, wounding on fours, getting one wound. Minus two AP, so one four up armor save, and fails, and it does an automatic three damage. And so the Chaos Land Raider will drop from eight wounds down to five. And now the Silver Soul Grinder will also shoot the Chaos Land Raider. Starting with the Harvester Cannon, three shots hitting on fives, getting two hits, wounding on fives, and fails to wound. Then the Flem Bombardment, D6 shots, getting five shots, hitting on fives, and getting two hits. Zinch is going to use one command point going from seven down to six to use a command reroll in order to reroll that four. And here's the reroll, getting a third hit, wounding on fours, and getting two wounds. And so now Zinch will use their reroll thanks to Gaze of Fate in order to reroll the failed wound roll. And here's the reroll getting a third wound, three four up armor saves, and fails one. And so now Death Guard is going to use one command point, going from six down to five, in order to reroll that failed armor save. Looking for a four up, and gets it. So all three saved. This means that the Chaos Land Raider will not fall to its lowest tier on its damage chart. It will stay at its second tier for a slightly better ballistic skill. 
next turn. So now going into the assault phase for Zinch turn one. There is one charge to declare, and it is Magnus declaring a multi-charge onto the Plague Burst Crawler and the Demon Prince of Nurgle. The only Overwatch to resolve will be from the Plague Burst Crawler. Starting with the Entropy Cannons, two shots, hitting on sixes, getting one hit, wounding on a four now that Magnus is toughness eight, and it wounds anyways. One, four up, and vulnerable save, which fails. But Magnus is going to use one command point, going from six down to five, for a command reroll in order to reroll that dice. And here's the reroll, and passes the invulnerable save. So now D6 shots from the Plague Burst Mortar, getting one shot, and now the Death Guard will use a command point, going from five down to four for a command reroll in order to reroll the number of shots. Hoping for something much bigger, still only getting one shot. Hitting on a six, and it fails to hit on top of that. Four shots from the Heavy Slugger, hitting on sixes, and getting a six with that. Wounding on a five, and it fails to wound. And not that it matters, but here's the charge distance, <laughs> and of course Magnus gets a 12 for his charge distance. And Magnus will now be in combat with both. So going into the fight phase of Zinch turn one, we will start with Magnus, who still has seven attacks base since he's at 17 wounds, and he will place five of the seven attacks onto the Demon Prince of Nurgle, and two of the seven attacks onto the Plague Burst Crawler. So starting with the five attacks onto the Demon Prince, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones thanks to himself, and here's the re-roll, getting five hits, wounding on twos, and getting five wounds. And thanks to being death hexed, the Demon Prince does not have a save since it's minus four AP, and since they do three damage apiece, 15 five up disgustingly resilient rolls. And he passes five, but fails 10. And so Magnus slaughters the Demon Prince of Nurgle, and that will be first blood. And so now the two attacks onto the Plague Burst Crawler, hitting on twos, getting two hits, wounding on twos, getting two wounds, two five up and vulnerable saves, and passes both. And so the Plague Burst Crawler will then hit back, three attacks, hitting on sixes, getting one hit, strength seven versus toughness eight means fives to wound, and gets a wound, one three up armor save, which passes. And so Magnus will remain locked in combat with the Plague Burst Crawler, and they are pretty much base to base, so they cannot consolidate in any further. So we will go right to the morale phase, and there are no morale tests to take. So now taking a look at the tactical objective cards, thanks to killing that demon prince for first blood, Zinch did successfully achieve assassinate. They failed to complete psychological warfare, but they did get one victory point for successfully securing objective marker five. And so at the end of Zinch turn one, the score currently sits at three victory points for Zinch and zero victory points for the Death Guard. Going into Death Guard turn one, a reminder that the Death Guard have four command points left and Zinch has five command points left. The Death Guard draw three new tactical objective cards and they draw defend objective two, score two victory points if you control objective marker two at the end of two consecutive turns. And objective marker two is right here, surrounded by a group of pink horrors back in the Zinch deployment zone. Advance, score one victory point if no unit from your army is within your deployment zone at the end of your turn. And Witch Hunter, score one victory point if at least one enemy Psyker was destroyed during this turn. So at the start of the movement phase, this Plague Burst Crawler is going to fall back up to nine inches out of combat with Magnus and it will end its movement here. This squad of Nurgling Swarms will remain still. This squad of Nurgling Swarms will also remain still. The units inside of this Land Raider will now disembark. And so here's where they all disembarked. So now the Plague Marines are going to reposition themselves up to five inches. And so all of the Plague Marines are right here. They are now all just over an inch away, except for this guy who's behind a couple of his Plague Marine brethren. But they are now arranged like so, so that now the Plague Surgeon can move up over to here. And now the Plague Surgeon is right here. Now the Malignant Playcaster will move up to five inches. And finally the Tallyman will also move up to five inches, right to here. The Land Raider is now going to move back a couple of inches, right to there. This Demon Prince of Nurgle is now going to move up the board 12 inches. 
and you will end up right here, just over three inches away from Kairos Fate Weaver, so he will need a three inch charge to make it into combat. And finally, Mortarian, because he doesn't have anything better to do, and there are no closer targets, will move 12 inches over to here in order to engage those pink horrors. And Mortarian will end up right here, just over three inches away from those pink horrors. So, going into the Psychic phase, for Death Guard turn one, Mortarian will start by attempting to manifest Miasma of Pestilence and Blades of Putrefaction onto himself. So, starting with Miasma of Pestilence, which has a warp chart value of 6, and he fails with a 5. So the Death Guard are going to use one command point, going from 4 down to 3, in order to use a command reroll to reroll the 1. And here's the reroll, getting a 3, so it passes with a 7. Kairos Fateweaver will now attempt to deny the Witch. And he fails with a 5, so Miasma of Pestilence will go off. And now for Blades of Putrefaction, which has a warp charge value of 5, and that fails with a 2, and they cannot reroll that. So Blades of Putrefaction will not go off. Now this Demon Prince of Nurgle will attempt to manifest Smite onto Kairos Fateweaver, needing at least a 5, and fails with a 4. So finally, the Malignant Playcaster will attempt to manifest Gift of Contagion onto Magnus the Red, and he will attempt to manifest Putrescent Vitality onto the Plague Marines. So starting with Gift of Contagion, which has a Warp Charge value of 7, and it fails with a 6, so it will not go off. And now Putrescent Vitality onto the Plague Marines, which needs a 6, and fails with a 2, so that will also fail to go off. And so even without denying the Witch, the Death Guard failed to cast 4 of their 5 Psychic Powers this turn. Luckily for them, the one that did go off, Miasma of Pestilence, Zinch failed to deny the Witch on. So, going into the shooting phase, the Death Guard will start by having Mortarian fire the Lantern into the Lord of Change with Baleful Sword. This is because if it hits the Lord of Change, then thanks to the Lantern's special rules, it will hit both the Lord of Change and Kairos Fateweaver. So, hitting on a 2-up, and it hits. So, wounding on a 3 against the Lord of Change, and it wounds. And then wounding on a 3 against Kairos Fateweaver, and that also wounds. So the 3-up Invuln for the Lord of Change, which passes, and the 4-up Invuln for Kairos Fateweaver, which also passes. And so now the Chaos Land Raider is going to fire everything that it has into Magnus the Red. Starting with the Combi Bolter, which is in rapid fire range. 4 shots hitting on 4s, getting 1 hit. Wounding on a 6, and it fails to wound. Twin Heavy Bolter, 6 shots hitting on 4s. And that's a lot of threes, getting two hits, wounding on fives, and failing to wound. Two twin last cannons, four shots, hitting on fours, getting one hit, wounding on a three, and it wounds. One four up and vulnerable save, which fails, and it will do d6 damage, and it will do three damage. So Magnus the Red will drop from 17 wounds down to 14. And so now, finally, all of the infantry that are somewhat semi-surrounding Magnus will fire their various weapons into him. Tallyman will fire a plasma pistol, Malignant Plague Caster will fire a bolt pistol, Plague Surgeon will fire a bolt pistol, Plague Champion will fire a bolt pistol, and one Plague Marine will fire a crack grenade. And we will start with the Tallyman and his plasma pistol, and he is actually just within six inches of the Demon Prince of Nurgle by Kairos Fateweaver, so he will fire a supercharged shot, because he will be able to reroll hit rolls of one. So, supercharged shot hitting on a three, and it hits. Wounding on a four, and it wounds. One four up and vulnerable save, which passes. Malignant Playcaster firing a bolt pistol, hitting on a three, and it hits. Wounding on a six, and it fails to wound. Plague Surgeon, bolt pistol, hitting on a three, and it fails to hit. Plague Champion, bolt pistol, hitting on a three, and it hits. Wounding on a six, and it fails to wound. One crack grenade, hitting on a three, and it fails to hit. Going into the assault phase, there are six charges to declare. First is Mortarian declaring a charge onto the Pink Horrors, and he is just over three inches away. Second is the Demon Prince of Nurgle declaring a charge onto Kairos Fateweaver, and he is also just over three inches away. And then finally, the Plague Marines, Plague Surgeon, Malignant Plaguecaster, and Tallyman are all declaring a charge onto Magnus. 
They are all just over an inch away. However, the Malignant Playcaster and the Tallyman are charging through a crater. And so we will start with Mortarian against the Pink Horrors. 20 shots of Overwatch hitting on sixes. It all failed to hit. 2d6 charge range, getting nine inches of charge. And so now Mortarian with all of his wounds is now locked in combat with those Pink Horrors. Now for the Demon Prince charging into Kairos. There is no Overwatch, so 2d6 charge range, Gets 5 inches, which is more than enough. And so the Demon Prince of Nurgle is now locked in combat with Kairos Fateweaver. Going over to here with these various units, there is no Overwatch from Magnus, and so first the Plague Surgeon will make its charge, and since it's just over an inch away and is not charging through a crater, he automatically makes it in, and is now in base to base with Magnus. Next, the Plague Marines will make it in, and they are also just over an inch away, not charging through a crater, so they will automatically make it in. And so they are all locked in combat with Magnus the Red, but now we will have to roll for the charge distance for the Malignant Plague Caster and the Tallyman. Starting with the Malignant Playcaster needs at least three, and he makes it in with a 10, and the Tallyman also needs at least a three, and he makes it in with an eight. And so now both of those units are in combat with Magnus the Red. So now going to the fight phase, there are a couple of things that need to be resolved before the units can actually fight each other. First, Mortarian needs to resolve his host of plagues onto those pink horrors, and it fails to go off. And the blue soul grinder is actually also within seven inches of Mortarian, and so even though he's not engaged, he still has to roll for a host of plagues. And that will go off, and it will do D3 mortal wounds, doing just one mortal wound. And so the blue soul grinder will go from 14 starting wounds down to 13. And then finally, Zinch needs to roll for its loci of trickery taking away the highest, and so hit rolls of four will not count for the Death Guard if they are attacking a Zinch Demon character, which in this case is only Kairos Fateweaver, and there are no Zinch Demon characters within six inches of the Pink Horrors, so they are unaffected by this. And so the Death Guard are going to start by having the Plague Marines attack Magnus the Red, starting with the Plague Champion, who will use his Power Fist. Two attacks, hitting on fours, re-rolling ones and twos, and getting two hits. Strength eight versus toughness eight, means fours to wound, and getting one wound. One four up and vulnerable save, which passes. So now four bubotic axes, which will do eight attacks, hitting on threes, re-rolling the one and the two, and here's the re-rolls, getting seven hits. Strength 5 versus Toughness 8 means 5s to wound, and getting 4 wounds, and 1 reroll thanks to being a plague weapon. Here's the reroll, still failing to wound. 5 4 up and vulnerable saves, passes 1 and fails 3. So Magnus will drop from 14 wounds down to 11. And so finally, 2 flails of corruption, doing d3 attacks apiece for a total of five attacks, hitting on threes, hitting three hits and two re-rolls, and the two re-rolls, getting five hits, wounding on fives, getting one wound and two re-rolls, thanks to being a plague weapon. And here's the two re-rolls, still failing to wound, but there was one wound in there before the re-rolls knocked it over, so one four up and vulnerable save, which passes. And so now, Zinch is going to use the stratagem counter-offensive for two command points, bringing them from five down to three left. This stratagem is used right after an enemy unit that charged has fought. Select one of your own eligible units and fight with it next. And Zinch is going to select Kairos Fateweaver to fight next. So Kairos Fateweaver, since he's still at full health, has five attacks base with the Staff of Tomorrow. Hitting on threes and getting three hits. Wounding on threes, getting one wound. But Zinch is going to use one command reroll, going from three down to two in order to reroll the two and it causes an additional wound. So, two five up and vulnerable saves. Passes one and fails one. And it will do d6 damage. And it'll do four damage. Four five up disgustingly resilient rolls. Passes one and fails three. And so this demon prince will drop from eight starting wounds down to five. And now the demon prince will attack back next. So the Demon Prince, on to Kairos Fateweaver. Seven attacks with its two sets of Malefic Talons, 
Hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, and getting five hits. And the two re-rolls, getting one additional hit. But because within those hit rolls there were two fours, which we are not counting thanks to the Locust of Trickery, there's only four actual hits. So wounding on fours, getting one wound. And one four up in marble save, which fails. And so Kairos Fate Weaver will drop from 16 starting wounds down to 14. And now Mortarian will strike against the Pink Horrors. Mortarian is still at full health, so he has six attack space, and he is going to use the Reaping Scythe form from Silence. So he actually is going to have 18 attacks onto the Pink Horrors. Hitting on twos and re-rolling ones, thanks to himself. So getting 12 hits and 6 re-rolls, getting 17 hits. Wounding on 2 re-rolling 1s, thanks to being a plague weapon. Getting 12 wounds and 5 re-rolls, getting 16 wounds total. 16 4 up and vulnerable saves. And they pass 5, but fail 11. And so this squad of pink horrors is completely wiped out. And so then Mortarian will consolidate a couple of inches closer. And he will finish his 3 inch consolidation here, and he is sitting on top of objective marker 1, which is underneath his base. And so then the Tallyman, Plague Surgeon, and Malignant Playcaster will all attack Magnus. Starting with the Tallyman, 3 attacks base, hitting on 3s, and re-rolling thanks to himself, getting 3 hits, wounding on 6s, getting 1 wound. One three up armor save, which passes. Now the plague surgeon, three attacks with the bale sword, hitting on threes, re-rolling thanks to the tallyman. And here's the re-roll, still failing to hit, wounding on sixes, getting one wound. One four up invulnerable save, which passes. Finally, the malignant playcaster with his corrupted staff, three attacks, hitting on threes, getting three hits, wounding on fives, gets one wound. One four up and vulnerable save, which passes. This means that the only unit left to attack is Magnus. So Magnus has seven attacks base, since he's still at 11 wounds, and so he will place two attacks onto the Tallyman, two attacks onto the Malignant Plaguecaster, and three attacks onto the Plague Surgeon. Starting with the two attacks onto the Tallyman, hitting on twos, and re-rolling ones thanks to himself, and here's the re-roll, still failing to hit, wounding on a two, and it wounds. It's minus four AP, so the Tallyman will not have a save. Three five up disgustingly resilient rolls, fails two, and passes one. And so the Tallyman will drop from four wounds base down to two. Now for the two attacks onto the Malignant Plague Caster, hitting on twos, getting two hits, wounding on twos, getting two wounds. The Malignant Playcaster will not have a save, so six five up disgustingly resilient rolls, and fails all six. Rerolling the one thanks to the Plague Surgeon, still fails and it doesn't matter. And so the Plague Surgeon is killed off. And then finally, the three attacks onto the Plague Surgeon, hitting on twos, rerolling the one, getting three hits, wounding on twos, getting two wounds, two six up armor saves, passes one and fails one. So first on a four up does Magnus suffer a mortal wound, and he does not. But then the Plague Surgeon will take three five up disgustingly resilient rolls, passes one, fails one, and gets one re-roll. Here's the re-roll, which still fails, so he will also suffer two wounds. And so the Plague Surgeon will drop from four wounds base down to two left. And that's it for the fight phase, and so going into the morale phase there are no morale tests to take. So taking a look at the tactical objective cards, the Death Guard have failed to defend objective 2, they failed to achieve advance, but thanks to Mortarian wiping out that pink horror squad, they do get one victory point for Witch Hunter. And so at the end of Death Guard turn 1, the score currently sits at one victory point for the Death Guard and three victory points for Zinch. <laughs> Going into Zinch turn 2, a reminder that Zinch has 2 command points left, and the Death Guard have 3 command points left. 
Also a reminder that Zinch held on to the psychological warfare from the previous turn because they failed to complete it. However, because this is the mission Targets of Opportunity, that objective card now has to be thrown away as the opportunity to achieve that target has been lost. And so Zinch draws three new tactical objective cards and they draw Supremacy. Score D3 victory points if you control any three objective markers at the end of your turn. Hold the line, score one victory points if you have at least three units completely within your deployment zone and your opponent has no models within your deployment zone at the end of your turn, this objective cannot be achieved on your first turn. And Delight in Despair. Score one victory point if your opponent failed a morale test during this turn. If an enemy unit failed a morale test during this turn whilst within three inches of any of your Slanesh demon units, score D3 victory points instead. So going into the movement phase, Zinch will start by having this squad of pink horrors sitting on objective marker two remain still. Then this squad of pink horrors sitting on objective marker five will also remain still. This silver soul grinder will remain still. This blue soul grinder will also remain still. Kairos Fateweaver is going to fall back into the Zinch deployment zone, out of combat, up to 12 inches, and Kairos will end up back here, fully within the Zinch deployment zone. And now the Lord of Change is going to jump up the board, up to 12 inches, in order to be closer to objective marker 4. And Magnus the Red will remain locked in combat with the Plague Marines, the Plague Surgeon, and the Tallyman. Going into the Psychic phase, for Zinch turn 2, we will start by having Kairos Fate Weaver attempt to manifest Gaze of Fate, and he will also attempt to manifest both Smite and Infernal Gateway onto the Demon Prince of Nurgle with Wings because it is the closest visible enemy unit, and it is just within 12 inches. So starting with Gaze of Fate, and it needs a 6, and he gets it with a 9 because potentially the Demon Prince might be killed off, it will attempt to deny the Witch first. And it fails with a 5, so Zinch will now have a free reroll to use in this turn. Next will be Infernal Gateway, which has a Warp Charge value of 8. And he gets it with a 13, which not only is impossible for the Death Guard to deny, but just like Smite, it will inflict D6 mortal wounds instead of D3 now because the power manifested with a Psychic Test of 12 up. And it does not cause perils because he didn't roll double sixes. So, D6 mortal wounds, causing two mortal wounds. And Zinch will use one command point, going from two down to one, for a command reroll to reroll the number of mortal wounds. And here's where they hope they don't roll a one. And this time they roll a six. So, six five up disgustingly resilient rolls. And they pass one, but fail five. And so the Death Guard are also going to have to use a command point going from three down to two to use a command reroll to reroll one of those failed disgustingly resilient rolls. And they will reroll the three and it passes. Thanks to the Tallyman still being alive, with a seven, they get the command point back. And they do, going back up to three. And so the Demon Prince will only take four damage, which means that the Demon Prince will go from five wounds down to one left, and he will still be alive. So now Kairos will attempt to manifest Smite, and he does with an eight. And Mortarion will attempt to deny the Witch, and he passes with a nine. So Smite does not go off. So now the Lord of Change with Baleful Sword will attempt to manifest Bolt of Change onto the Demon Prince, looking for an eight or higher, and fails with a double one, which is a perils. And because of that, Zinch is going to use their one reroll from Gaze of Fate in order to reroll one of the ones. And so Bolt of Change passes with an eight thanks to the Psychic Test bonus. So, can Mordharian deny the Witch? <laughs> he does with an 11. So now, the Lord of Change will attempt to manifest Smite onto the Demon Prince of Nurgle, needing at least a 5, and gets it with a 7. Mordharian has one deny the Witch left, but it fails with a 6. And so it will do D3 mortal wounds, and it will do three mortal wounds. And so the Demon Prince needs to pass three five-up disgustingly resilient rolls and fails two. And so this Demon Prince is killed off. 
So now, Mortarian. He will cast Smite onto the Plague Surgeon. He will attempt to manifest Diabolic Strength onto himself. And he will attempt to manifest Death Hex onto the Plague Burst Crawler. And unfortunately for the Death Guard, they have no more Deny the Witch tests available to use. So, starting with Smite onto the Plague Surgeon. And it goes off with a 6. And Magnus has a special smite, which does d6 mortal wounds to start, and it will do 5. So, 5, 5 up disgustingly resilient rolls. Passes 1, fails 2, and gets 2 rerolls, but that will be enough to finish off his 2 remaining wounds. However, just for fun, let's do the rerolls. And he would have passed one more of them. That means the Plague Surgeon is killed off. And so the Plague Surgeon is removed. Now for Diabolic Strength onto himself, he needs a 6, and he gets it with a 10. So Magnus will now have plus 2 Strength and plus 1 to his attack characteristic until the start of the next Zinch Psychic phase. And finally, Death Hex onto the Plague Burst Crawler. It needs an 8 or higher, and he gets it with a 9. So the Plague Burst Crawler will not be able to take invulnerable saves until the start of the next Zinch Psychic phase. Going into the shooting phase, Zinch will start by having the Silver Soul Grinder fire everything it has into the Chaos Land Raider. Starting with the Harvester Cannon, three shots hitting on fours and getting two hits. Wounding on fives, getting one wound. Minus one AP, so one three up armor save, which passes. Now for the Phlegm Bombardment, D6 shots, getting six shots. Six shots, hitting on fours, and getting five hits. Wow. Wounding on fours, and getting three wounds. Three four up armor saves, passes two, and fails one. And now that it's the shooting phase, Death Guard is gonna use one command point for one command reroll going from three down to two in order to reroll that three. So looking for another four, and they get it. So all past the armor saves. But now, thanks to the Tallyman still being alive, rolling two dice, and on a seven, they get the command point back, and they do not. So Death Guard is now permanently down to two command points. So now the blue Soul Grinder will also shoot everything it has into the Chaos Land Raider. Starting with the Harvester Cannon, three shots hitting on fours. Getting one hit. Wounding on a five. And it wounds. One three up armor save. Which passes. And now D6 shots from the Flum Bombardment. Getting two shots. And Zinch is going to use its last command point, going from one down to zero, in order to re-roll the number of shots. And here's the re-roll. Getting five shots. Hitting on fours. And getting three hits. Wounding on fours. And getting two wounds. Two, four up armor saves, passes one and fails one. And it has a damage characteristic of three, so it will take the Land Raider from five wounds down to two left. So going into the assault phase, there are no charges to declare. So we will go right into the fight phase and resolve Magnus versus the Plague Marines and the Tallyman. Since Magnus successfully manifested Diabolic Strength and he's still at 11 wounds, he will have eight attacks base with the Blade of Magnus. And so he will place two of those attacks onto the Tallyman and six of the attacks onto the Plague Marines. So starting with the two attacks onto the Tallyman, Hitting on twos, getting two hits. Wounding on twos, getting two wounds. Minus four AP, so the Tallyman will not have a save, and they are three damage apiece, so six damage total means six five up disgustingly resilient rolls. And he fails all six. And no rerolls thanks to the Plague Surgeon being killed off. And so the Tallyman is wiped out. And now for the six attacks onto the Plague Marines. Hitting on twos. Wow, that's a bad roll. But luckily, re-rolling ones thanks to himself. And here's the re-rolls. And getting five hits. Wounding on twos. Yikes! Why are all these ones all of a sudden being rolled? Getting just three wounds. No saves, since it's minus four AP and they do three damage apiece, but this has to be done separately. So, strike number one, three disgusting resilient rolls, passes two and fails one. And now that it's the fight phase, Death Guard are gonna use one command point going from two down to one in order to use a command reroll to try and save that one. And so here's the reroll on the one and they fail and that is one dead Plague Marine. So now the second strike 
for Disgustingly Resilient, only passes one, so a second Plague Marine will go down. And then the third strike, all failed, so a third Plague Marine will go down. And so three Bubotic Axes will be removed. But that's all of Magnus's attacks, so now the Plague Marines will get to attack back. Starting with the one lone Bubotic Axe. Two attacks. Hitting on threes, getting two hits. Wounding on fives. And both fail to wound. And they aren't ones, so they can't be rerolled. Now the Plague Champion with his Power Fist. Two attacks, hitting on fours. And both fail to hit. And so finally, the two Marines with Flails of Corruption. D3 attacks apiece. Getting a total of two attacks. Hitting on threes. <laughs> and both fail to hit. So those Plague Marines completely whiff which means they will stay locked in combat with Magnus. But now, going into the morale phase, these Plague Marines did lose three models this turn, and the Plague Champion does have leadership of eight, but they could fail if they rolled a six. So here's their morale test, and they pass with a three. And so taking a look at the tactical objective cards, Zinch did successfully complete Supremacy, thanks to that Lord of Change not charging in combat and sitting on that objective. So they will get D3 victory points for that. And here's the roll, and they get three victory points. They will also get one victory point for successfully holding the line, thanks to Kairos Fateweaver falling back into the Zinch deployment zone, gave them three full units within their deployment zone, but they failed to complete Delight and Despair thanks to those Plague Marines successfully passing their morale check. And so at the end of Zinch turn two, the score currently sits at seven victory points for Zinch and one victory point for the Death Guard. Going into Death Guard turn two, a reminder that the Death Guard have one command point left and Zinch has zero command points left. Also a reminder that Death Guard held on to Defend Objective 2 and Advance from the previous turn. However, because of the mission rules, those both have to be thrown away. And so the Death Guard draw three new tactical objective cards and they draw Spread Contagion. When this tactical objective is generated, nominate one of your Death Guard characters, score one victory point if this character is still alive at the end of the game. And the Death Guard will nominate Mortarian because he is the only Death Guard character still alive currently. Blood and Guts, score one victory point if an enemy unit was destroyed during the fight phase of this turn. If three or more enemy units were destroyed during the fight phase of this turn, score D3 victory points instead. And Secure Objective 2, score one victory point if you control Objective Marker 2 at the end of your turn. And Objective Marker 2 is right here, currently surrounded by a group of pink horrors in the Zinch deployment zone. Going into the movement phase, Mortarian is going to move 12 inches up the board towards the Zinch deployment zone and he will finish his movement right here and just for reference he would need a five inch charge in order to make it into combat with Kairos Fateweaver. This squad of Nurkling Swarms will remain still. This Chaos Land Raider will remain still. This squad of Nurgling Swarms will remain still. This Plague Burst Crawler will remain still. And finally, these Plague Marines will fall back out of combat and they will fall back to here. This way, it will be very difficult for Zinch to charge the Plague Burst Crawler. Going into the Psychic phase, Mortarian, who is the only Death Guard Psyker left alive on the board, will attempt to manifest Miasma of Pestilence and Blades of Putrefaction onto himself. Starting with Miasma of Pestilence, which has a warp charge value of 6, and he gets it with a 7. Kairos Fateweaver will attempt to deny the Witch, and he successfully does with a 9. So Miasma of Pestilence will not go off. And finally, Blades of Putrefaction, which needs a 5, and fails with a 4. But the Death Guard are going to use their final command point in order to use a command reroll to reroll the 1. And here's the reroll, and still fails to get it. So Blades of Putrefaction also does not go off. So going into the shooting phase, the Death Guard will start with their Plague Burst Crawler, which will fire its Heavy Slugger and its two Entropy Cannons into Magnus the Red, and it will fire its Plague Burst Mortar into the Blue Soul Grinder. Starting with the Heavy Slugger, four shots, hitting on fours, hitting two hits, wounding on fives, and both fail to wound. Now the two Entropy Cannons, hitting on fours, hitting one hit, wounding on a three, and it wounds. One four up and vulnerable save, which fails, and it will do d6 damage, and it'll do four damage. 
And so Magnus the Red will fall from 11 wounds down to 7. And now for the Plague Burst Mortar onto the Soul Grinder. D6 shots, hitting one shot. Hitting on a 4, and it hits. Wounding on a 3, and it wounds. One 4-up and vulnerable save, which fails. And it will do D3 damage, and it will do 2 damage. And so the blue Soul Grinder will fall from 13 wounds down to 11. And now the Chaos Land Raider is going to fire everything that it has into Magnus the Red. Starting with the four shots from the two twin last cannons. Hitting on fives. Hitting one hit. Wounding on a three. And it fails to wound. Four shots from the Combi Bolter. Hitting on fives. Getting one hit. Wounding on a five and fails to wound as well. Six shots from the twin heavy bolter, hitting on fives, getting three hits. Wounding on fives, getting one wound. One four up and vulnerable save, which fails. And it does one more damage, so Magnus will drop from seven wounds down to six. Finally in the shooting phase, Mortarian is going to fire the lantern into the blue soul grinder. Hitting on a two, and it hits. Wounding on a three, and it wounds. One four up and vulnerable save, and it passes. So now going into the assault phase, Mortarian will declare charge onto Kairos Fate Weaver. No overwatch, and he needs five inches. And here's the charge distance, and gets it with an 11. So Mortarian will now be locked in combat with Kairos Fate Weaver, and we will have to resolve his host of plagues against Kairos and the Soul Grinder. So first, the host of plagues against Kairos, and it will not go off, and the host of plays against the Soul Grinder will also not go off. So now Zinch will roll for his Loki of Trickery, subtracting the highest, and so hit rolls of three will not count against Kairos Fate Weaver. So Mortarian, who is still at full health, has six attacks base, and he will use the Eviscerating Blow form of Silence. So six attacks, hitting on twos, rerolling ones thanks to himself, and getting four hits so far. And here's the two rerolls, getting six hits, but we have to subtract threes. And so there are two hit rolls that actually failed to hit getting four hits. Wounding on twos, getting four wounds, and unfortunately those sixes do not cause automatic mortal wounds. So just four wounds. Four four up and vulnerable saves, and he passes three of them. Kairos passes three. So the one that goes through will do d6 damage, and of course it does one damage. So Kairos Fate Weaver will fall from 14 wounds down to 13. And now Mortarian's Attendance Claws and Teeth will attack. D6 attacks, getting four attacks. Hitting on twos, rerolling ones. Getting four hits, but subtracting the three, thanks to Loki of Trickery, so three hits. Wounding on sixes. Getting one wound so far, and two rerolls. Here's the two rerolls. Still just getting the one wound. One four up and vulnerable save, which fails. So one more damage. So Kairos will fall from 13 wounds down to 12. And now Kairos will get to hit back. He is still in his top tier, so he has five attacks base. Hitting on threes and getting four hits. Wounding on threes, getting two wounds. Two four up and vulnerable saves. Passes one and fails one. And this will do D6 damage, doing three damage. Three disgustingly resilient rolls and fails all three. So Mortarian will fall from 18 starting wounds down to 15. And that's the end of the fight phase. So going into the morale phase, there are no morale tests to take. So taking a look at the tactical objective cards, the game has not finished, so they haven't completed Spread Contagion. They did not complete Blood and Guts because they did not kill any enemy units in the fight phase. And they failed to secure Objective 2. And so at the end of Death Guard Turn 2, the score currently sits at 1 victory point for the Death Guard and 7 victory points for Zinch. And so at this point, Death Guard is going to declare a concession. And so the victory will go to Zinch. This does mean, of course, that Death Guard will achieve Line Breaker, thanks to Mortarian being at least partially within the Zinch deployment zone. And since the game is over, this does mean that they also get a victory point for Spread Contagion. And so the actual final score is three victory points for the Death Guard and seven victory points for Zinch. 
And so now that the game is over, and it's been declared that the Death Guard have conceded the game, which results in a Zinch victory with a final victory point score of 7 for Zinch versus 3 for the Death Guard, I can go over one or two of my final thoughts, starting with the main reason for why Death Guard conceded this battle. At this point in the game, while we are only two turns into the game, and Death Guard still has some stuff on the board, especially considering a Mortarian who has 15 wounds left. However, Zinch still has a fully healthy Lord of Change with the Impossible Robe and a Baleful Sword. Kairos Fate Weaver still has 12 wounds left, one fully healthy Soul Grinder, and a second Soul Grinder which still has 11 wounds left and therefore in its top tier of damage. And finally, Magnus, who is still in his second tier of damage not even his bottom tier. So he still has plus one to his psychic test bonus, he still has the extra attacks, and he still has the extra movement. And that's the biggest problem, because Magnus, of course, has the psychic power warp time, which allows him to move in the psychic phase as if it were the movement phase. As long as he gets this off, which he most likely would, this guarantees Magnus to be able to move across the board and engage Mortarion. And not only that, but the Lord of Change is also close enough that even with just moving in the movement phase, it will be close enough to move up and engage in close combat. And so there is the potential in Zinch turn three assault phase and then fight phase for a Lord of Change with Baleful Sword, Magnus the Red, and the Blue Soul Grinder to all charge Mortarion, which would mean those three units plus Kairos Fate Weaver would all get to attack Mortarion before Mortarion gets a chance to attack back. And that, of course, in my opinion, practically guarantees Mortarion's death, especially if Magnus casts Death Hex on Mortarion, which he most likely would attempt to and has a pretty good chance of it successfully going off. And so because of that, we're talking about Mortarion dying which is Slay the Warlord for Zinch. Death Guard loses Linebreaker. They definitely lose Spread Contagion. I mean, they would lose that anyways because in the next turn they would lose that objective card. So partially this way they get a couple extra victory points out of it by conceding now rather than letting the game go on and have the spread become greater. But most likely Mortarion is dead in Zinch turn 3. And of course the Soul Grinders, both of them, are still able to shoot. And so even if the blue Soul Grinder charges Mortarion, it still wouldn't have have to move in the movement phase, which means it can still fire normally at either a Nurgling Swarm or the Land Raider with only two wounds left. And of course, the Silver Soul Grinder can still shoot normally. And so it would be very easy for them to shoot and kill off the Land Raider and possibly do damage to the Plague Marines or the Plague Burst Crawler. Either way, while I don't know that the Death Guard would be tabled in Zinch turn three, it is very unlikely that they would not be tabled by the end of Zinch turn five. And at this point with how big the spread was, because obviously the only reason it's seven to three is because the game ended now. If the game didn't end, the score would still only be seven to one. And Zinch could very possibly draw three very easy to achieve tactical objective cards and increase the spread further. And if they kill off Mortarion, that gives them Slay the Warlord, which makes the spread go even further. So. There's not really much to say. It was a pretty good game overall. The only issue, I think, especially for the Death Guard, was the fact that Zinch stole the initiative and then had a very good turn one. And they had positioned themselves in such a way that Mortarion was not really able to use his full potential in Death Guard turn one. And I think that really hurt. Because obviously Mortarion was too far away to engage any of the big targets turn one. And so, yeah, he was able to kill off the Pink Horror Squad in order to achieve that tactical objective card for killing a Psyker. But that's really all he did this game. He took two wounds total off of Cairo's Fate Weaver. Like, Mortarion is supposed to be great in close combat, and he is great in close combat. We've seen him in previous battle reports. Mortarion is amazing in close combat, but this time he just didn't do anything against Kairos, which is kind of funny, because Kairos is not supposed to be good in close combat. He has a worse ballistic skill compared to other Lords of Change. According to the lore, he can't actually see the present, so he's not good in close combat, but he managed to hold his own against Mortarion and 
take some wounds off. So overall, I thought it was a pretty interesting game. It just started off with such an aggressive start for Zinch that they sort of they sort of had the ball in their court the whole time and had control of it. So not really much else that could happen. It's always possible that Mortarian could survive, but with how things were going, I don't think it was possible. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.